how to stream and record using OBS Studio on macOS. Following this tutorial should be rather easy, but if you get stuck or have a specific question, then leave a comment and I will get back to you. You can also use the timestamps in the description below to navigate through the video. This guide will be demonstrated on macOS Catalina version 10.15.5, but it will also be suitable for earlier and later OS versions. To get started, Click on the first link in the description to get to this page. Here, select macOS and download the installer. This will take a few seconds to download the OBS installer, which you will have to install to your system. After downloading and installing the installer, you should be able to open up OBS Studio. We will first of all add a few sources to your scene, in order to make you understand how that works. When this is done, you will have to play around with some settings and then you're set. So first of all, click on this plus symbol in your sources section. This will open up this drop down menu, where you can choose from different sources. If you wish to record your screen, then select the display capture source. Name it whatever you want, select the main display which you want to record, apply a crop if you want, which I don't recommend, and then you're done. In most cases, your native macOS display is not running the standard 1080p resolution. Later, when going through the settings, I will show you how to fit the display capture source to your recording. In case you wish to record a single application, such as a game or browser, then add the window capture from your sources. You can choose a specific window to capture, which will even get captured if other applications are showing up in your window. When adding a video capture device, then you can choose an external capture device, such as your integrated webcam or camera, to show up in your recording or stream. These sources should cover the most important ones. Most of the others are pretty self-explanatory. Or you can ask a question in the comments to get further assistance. After adding your sources, you might already have noticed that sound from your desktop is not being recorded. This issue is normal on macOS and can be resolved using a small third-party application. A link to get to this page will be in the description below. On this page, scroll down and under Assets, select Soundflower 2.0 b2.dmg. This will automatically download and unarchive the content. Lastly, a folder will open up. Here, right-click Soundflower.pkg and select to open it up with the installer. You will now be able to install Soundflower to your system. When installation is completed, open up your Spotlight search and open up Audio MIDI Setup. On this window, select this plus sign to add the multi-output device. Here, set the sample rate to 48 kHz and then select to use your usual audio output device. This could be your laptop speakers, your headphones or external sound system and select to use the Soundflower 2 channel. You can now close this window and open up your system preferences. On this window select sound and then in the output section you will be able to select the multi-output device. This will enable you to listen to the output sound as well as record it with OBS Studio. Now that this is done we will take a look at the OBS Studio settings. In the Stream section, select your streaming service, set the server region to automatic and enter your stream key in this dialog box. Next, in the Output tab, set the Output mode to Advanced. In the Streaming section, set the encoder to X264, which will utilize your CPU rather than your graphics processor. As for most cases, your CPU will be able to handle the processing much better. In case you get the option to use a hardware encoder, for example if you're using an AMD Radeon Pro GPU on a MacBook Pro, then you can try to use the Apple VT hardware encoder. But even then, the performance will not be much better when trying to play games while streaming or recording. Don't rescale your output yet, as we will have to change this setting in a minute. Set your rate control to CBR, which stands for constant bitrate, and then for your bitrate, you should use an upload value your connection can steadily hold. 
If you don't know your connection's upload speed, then visit speedtest.net. Here, you will be able to test your latency, upload and download speed. If you notice high volatility in your speeds, then you might want to use a hardwired connection to your router or modem and reduce the number of devices using the same network connection. After the test is completed, you can set your bitrate accordingly. In my case, I could easily use a bitrate of 10, 20 or even 30,000 as I have an average upload speed of at least 30 megabytes per second. However, this is not needed. 3500 should be more than enough to stream 60 FPS in 720p. 5000 should be more than enough to stream in 1080p and 30 FPS. This means that you need at least 5 megabytes of constant upload speed in order to stream without getting dropped frames or even disconnecting. But I advise you to make a test stream as every network connection, streaming service and system has different properties. Set your keyframe interval to 2 seconds and profile to main. Your CPU usage preset should be set according to your process efficiency. If it's a newer, more powerful model, then set it to fast or faster. Otherwise, use very fast or for old CPUs, use super fast. After tweaking the most important streaming settings, we will take a look at your recording options. In the Recording tab, set your type to Standard. Set a recording path, which has enough storage left. And for the recording format, I like to use MP4, as the file size will remain pretty small and it's editable in every known editing program. Again here, set your encoder to X264, which will, for the most of you, make sense to use except when utilizing a more powerful graphics card, of course. Don't rescale your output yet. Set the rate control to CBR and bitrate to around 10,000 when recording in a normal resolution. When recording in 4K resolution, as I'm doing it now, then set it to around 20,000. This means that every recorded second will take up around 20 megabytes of disk space. Set the keyframe interval to two seconds and profile to main. Now that this is done, head over to your audio settings. Here, set the sample rate to 48 kHz and under devices, set the desktop audio to Soundflower 2 channel and your mic slash auxiliary device to your external microphone. You can leave the other settings as they are unless you want to add some hotkeys below. In the video section, Set the base canvas resolution to your native monitor resolution. In my case, this will be 3072 by 1920. Make sure to also set your output resolution to the same resolution. If you wish to stream in 720p or 1080p, then you will have to change this setting to the output resolution you wish to get. This will in any case improve your performance, reduce stuttering and lag for the viewer and I recommend to downscale your output resolution to at least 1080p when streaming to see if your system can handle it. Lastly, set the downscale filter to Lanxos when recording, as this will give you the sharpest image, but set it to bilinear or bicubic when streaming, as it will be less taxing on your system overall. As your FPS value, you should use anything between 30 and 60. Most like to use 60 when recording. Select OK, and now you should be done. In order to rescale any windows within OBS, simply select the sources and drag the corners to make everything fit. When you follow this tutorial, you should be able to stream on your channel or record videos on your Mac OS. The next step would be to improve your network connection for a more reliable stream and some additional tweaks to improve your system's performance while streaming or recording. To improve your network connection, make sure to use an Ethernet cable, which will make sure to have a more reliable experience when streaming. You should also restart your router if you haven't done this in a while and disable other devices from using the same network connection in order to reduce the risk of random downloads bottlenecking your connection. Next, make sure to exit out of programs which you don't need while recording or streaming. This could be your browser, running in the background, Steam or Skype. All of these programs still need some resources and can even use up your network connection.
If you wish to add any kind of alerts to your stream, such as a subscriber alert or donation alert, then visit streamlabs.com. Log in with your preferred platform and follow the guide to add everything you need to your stream on OBS. I hope this helped you out. Leave a comment if you have any questions and see you in the next one.